Well, as promised, today's video is dedicated to answering your questions specifically on this Mazda 3. Before we jump into that, a big hearty thank you for pressing on this video today. We can't tell you how much we appreciate that. So I'm going to answer questions. You drive. Sounds good to me. I'd prefer to drive anyway. <laughs> <laughs> now, day. It's good to have you along because you don't drive this Mazda 3 as much and maybe you're not quite as enamored with it as I am. I true okay so it'd be good to hear your opinion on some of these questions so yep and if you check out all of our videos on this Mazda 3 this is we have three long-term videos we have a review video we have a video anyway I'll put the playlist up there check out all of our videos we'd appreciate that and if you like it like them uh, think about subscribing we'd appreciate that also okay so let's just jump in here okay so first question we're gonna answer like five maybe a bonus okay and so the first question, and if I butcher anybody's names, pre apologies. <laughs> Jay Quellen. Where's Jay Quellen at? No Jay Quellen here? Uh, do you mean Jacqueline? Okay. So that's how it's going to be. Sure. So our first question. Oh. Uh, my readers? No, nah, well, maybe. <laughs> Hold on. Jeez, it was. I got some. Red All right, a nude Montura. Okay, starts again. Apologies if I if I didn't do that right. Do you plan on changing your tire setup to a bit wider ones? Maybe 225s or 235s would be nice visually as well as helping with braking. Okay, so I think I mentioned in the review, uh, you know, some couple thoughts on this. No, we're not going to change. Just short answer, no. This has 215. So yes, these are a little bit narrower. Uh, then uh, you'll see on something like Civic Sports, uh, you'll see on Elantra Sport uh, N lines, and and you know I think it's a good size because it's a narrower tire, and it, I think it really helps with uh, road noise. I think that's one of the reasons that this car is quiet. Uh, but I think if I were going to autocross this car or do any other mods, yeah, I would go to a different wheel and tire setup. I'd love to hear what other owners have done, what their thoughts are on going to a wider tire. Anyway, that's that uh, that's number number one. Okay, here's a good one. Where was your car made? This is from Setrack. Casillan. Okay, appreciate that, Setrack. Uh, where was your car built? I heard that the ones built in Mexico rattle compared to the ones built in Japan. Okay, so the sedans, at least in North America, the sedans are built in Mexico. So this specific Mazda 3 was built in Mexico and the hatchbacks sold in North America, at least in the United States, come from Japan. Uh, so yes, this this sedan, now we don't have any rattles. And That's this, this, good thing about this car. yeah, this, this car has been pretty solid. I have read rattles. I have not really looked into whether the folks who are complaining about rattles, whether they're hatchbacks or sedans. One of our other followers, Aced, uh, he has this exact same carbon trim built in Mexico, and he also has reported rattles. no problems oh, with no rattle. Problems, yeah. No, no problems. Mm -hmm. Even in cold, you know. When it yeah, even on the cold. coldest morning, this this car has proven to be solid. Again, fifteen thousand miles, so maybe they'll develop. Let's hope not. Hey, this is a good one. So. I, you know, I'm going to save that one because we're going to get into this infotainment mm -hmm. system. So, Denny Tapia, he asked, how much oil are you burning or are you burning oil yet? Mm -hmm. So, I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm oh, assuming, oh, Denny, that may be based on some experience <laughs> or some other things yes. you've read. Uh, so, this the answer to question straight up, this, we haven't had any oil burning. I have heard about the turbo versions uh, burning some oil. I think Mazda finally put out a uh, technical service bulletin and I don't think it's widespread. I think it's always something to do with the piston rings and I do know. So any turbo owners, let us know your oil burning experience out there. Comment and answer Denny's question. Okay, the final, next question comes from Ulyss Tangway Rivard. The phone's moving around too because you're, oh, you're, 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 you're driving. <laughs> I found a nice road. Oh. Look at this road. It's really yeah. fun. Let her rip. Alright, so you list Tangway. Even with the readers, I'm having a hard time. I don't know what's going on. Rivard, okay. He asked about cylinder deactivation. Uh, what What is cylinder deactivation? 
Okay, so some car, some manufacturers, when the car is cruising on the highway, and I'm going to butcher this, by the way, so, and hopefully it's not mansplaining. Okay, well, we'll you really, see. You really don't know. I really don't know. Okay, so this is a four-cylinder engine. When the car is cruising down the highway, it'll stop delivering fuel to one of the cylinders. It'll deactivate it so it starts acting like a three-cylinder engine to save fuel. Oh, I was going to say, it's why? It's all about to fuel save, economy. Oh, okay, because that was and, the next thing. Why would it And be most... I, I, you know, again, it's a little anecdotal. Most manufacturers have had reliability issues with doing that. So Mazda did do that in the higher trim levels of this three. And I think it was either 2021 or the 2020, they stopped doing the cylinder deactivation and was only available on the higher trims. And the other thing is, it only saved about one mile per gallon. What, yeah. What's, why? Yeah. Yeah, why do it then? Well, it, again, it's a lot to do with compliance. They're all trying to get, they're doing everything they can to get their EPA ratings up to meet government regulations. So they will do every trick in the book. Mazda's been pretty good, thankfully, about like stop-start systems right. and silly things like that to get the uh, fuel economy up. So anyway, they stopped cylinder deactivation, I think, in the 2021 model year because I think of issues with it. It was there was reliability issues. The crazy enough thing now is it's back. It's back for the twenty. I just the twenty twenty three. It's back, and it's in all trim levels. And oh, wow. and Mazda is actually you know you can go out to the Mazda website. They're actually they're pumping this up. This saves gas mileage. And I think it's one mpg again. So I'm a little leery of it. I don't think. Uh, I don't think. Uh, anyway. So we don't have it. We don't have it. Okay. And I think there's a way to turn it off. Uh, I, I don't know. But if anybody has cylinder deactivation in their 2023, uh, weigh in on the comments to ask Ulysses, uh, answer Ulysses, uh, Ulysses question here. And he also talks about the heated steering wheel because I would love a heated mm. steering wheel, but you got to go to the high turbo trim. In Canada, though, they do offer the heated steering wheel on the non-turbo trim levels. And Canada always gets the heating features. We love that, this Canadian. Yeah, they, they get the good stuff when it comes to staying warm that we don't get. <laughs> and uh, I think it's just as cold here sometimes. And Ulysses is also going to buy a 2021 all-wheel drive, fully spec that one by the end of the year. So oh, good, good choice, Ulysses. I think you'll love it, especially in all-wheel drive. And uh, yeah, so let us know when you do that. We'd love mm -hmm. to hear about your purchase there. That was a good one. Yep. Now, now you know. Now all I know about. what a deactive cylinder what was it again? <laughs> cylinder deactivation. Yep. Okay. Let's see. Uh, okay, Julia Lopez. Bunch of good questions here. And if it's Julio, I apologize. I think it's Julio. You think it's Julio? Yes. Okay. Julio, apologies again. First question is the suspension. Uh, how does this soak up bumps? And well, <laughs> I picked a good road for that. Well. I, I, we, we've we've commented a lot in our other reviews about this car and other commentary. This has a rear torsion beam. Mazda has tuned this. This I would call it a moderately stiff ride. And I've 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 always told folks, you know, in my in the videos that if you live where the pavement stinks, like in a city with potholes and all that, this is not the car. Uh, the, you know, yeah. not not only does it have a not a non-independent rear suspension. You want to ask what that is? non-independent uh, rear suspension? I think I could maybe think about that, but I'm, I'm driving, <laughs> so why don't you just explain it to me? Well, the simple answer is a lot of good cars, even the Mazda 3 prior to this generation, had an independent rear suspension. That means both rear wheels have no interaction with each other right. as they go over bumps. Right. And a, a good example of that was our Volkswagen GLI. That thing, you could feel all four wheels doing their own thing and it really smoothed out the bumps a mazda has decided not to do that with this generation they've gone to something called a torsion beam which actually connects up the rear the rear wheels it's independent on the front but the rear wheels are still connected so when mm. one bump yep. when, when, okay. when one wheel hits a bump it affects the other wheel yep. okay. and you really don't notice that unless you're on rough pavement you'll get a little bit of a hop in the back mm. I, I think there's a little hop and the car does get unsorted. You combine that with a pretty stiff tuning that they put on this. But I, I you know, if you live somewhere where the pavement stinks, this is not a, no. this does not soak up bumps. Right. Now the good thing about it is, 
you feel the road in this car. You, you do yes, feel. Yes, it kind of makes it the sporty feel. Yeah, you feel right. every undulation, but it's very comfortable. There's no sharp impacts. The suspension is very quiet. And Mazda claims that they've done this to quiet down the suspension, and I have to believe them on that. But the bottom line is they, they did it to save parts and, the, and expense. And the car's a little bit lighter weight. It's a little bit more easy to work on. The wheels stay in alignment better. 90% of the people who buy this car, including me, I don't mind it. Uh, it you know. Anyway, so that's that. Oh, and he asked about range so uh, one good thing about the three the sedan the two-wheel drive is this is the range topper in the lineup so you're going to lose some range with the all-wheel drive you're going to lose some range with the hatchback due to aerodynamics if you jump up if you jump up to the cx30 you're going to lose about a gallon of that tank size because of the all-wheel drive system so this is the range topper if you're out on the highway on this thing you're easily going to get close to 400 miles in a, in a tank full and preventive maintenance so far no just oil changes tie rotations so let's let's go ahead and answer ace question uh ace is a big uh, he owns this exact car and and okay. ace i can't tell you how much we appreciate you and your support for us and your uh, and all the commentary you provide on your carbon sedan so ace asked about the stereo system specifically he's asking about the base uh, uh when you're out on the highway and you know whether i'm assuming he's asking if if with the road noise and everything whether the base is still coming through nice and strong i think aced so let me know if that's not what you're asking about so big fans of this bose stereo system i think you would agree to that i do agree to that and now, uh, mechanism well we're gonna get to that oh, okay. yeah, we're gonna get right. to that uh <laughs> This is not a bassy system. It's a rich sounding, very pure sounding system. A lot of spatial separation. Now, when you're out on the highway, and, and again, so I don't, I don't notice any difference in the sound quality other than road noise. There is a setting in the settings so you can go in and change the volume levels as the road noise increases. And I'm assuming, Ace, you have that enabled. But uh, if you have that enabled and there's different sensitivities to that, you know, as you get out and road noise increase, this will increase the volume level. And I haven't noticed anything as far as the, the, the bass decreasing. Listen to a lot of podcasts, so that's probably not the best thing to do. But music-wise, it's one of the it's one of the great things about this car is being out on the highway and listening to music. It's it's a great little uh, sound a sound stage. Dominion, Dominion, Dominion. Go on with the question. I don't think that's your name. I think that's your handle. But uh, okay, here you go. I was considering getting this car, but I feel like the non-touchscreen with center console <laughs> controls may not be for me. Mm. From the reviews, people either love it or hate it. All right, I'm just gonna let you talk because. Well, it really all depends on how used to you get. Now, I. Sometimes we'll try to go up here because <laughs> I don't drive this car as much as you do. But um, I can, well, let's try it now. So now I have learned that my home button down here will kind of get me where I want to look. I can take my eyes off. And then if you kind of just turn this big wheel here, you'll get to the main menu and then if you kind of well, you're push in, it, you're in apple carplay so that's turn yeah. it. well true if i'm in apple carplay which i'm always in so i can get but you seem just to you seem what? to be struggling a little bit let's I just do, admit, because yeah. i think i don't drive it as much as you do yeah so i think when you get used to it you know i know i can hit this for my music and then i do have to take my eyes off the road and concentrate so i think actually it would be better if i if I drove the car a lot more. Oh, I gone. completely agree with the question because it is, right, if you're a new car, it's it's a little bit frustrating. Yeah, um, and, and I'm the opposite. I drive this car enough to the point where I love you know, it. Yeah, you can so, turn it and you can flip it and click it. And yeah, and, I, and, and, I, and I really struggle it. with touchscreens. I, I 
you know, and I know if I drove the touchscreen car for a couple weeks, I'd be back and yeah. loving that. I'd say that I wouldn't buy this car because of that, but you just have to give yourself time for the yeah. learning curve. And I, and, I would, and I would say that most people who own the car and drive the car All a the lot time. love, love it. it. Yeah. The best thing I would recommend is just see if you can just go out and test drive and just tell the sell the salesperson or to get, say I need to just sit in this and play with it yeah. and get really really comfortable using it and then bef and then then I'm going to take it out on test drive after I've gotten comfortable with it and try to do some basic things and now related to that we did have a question about Google Maps and what it looks like on the system now, let me do it <laughs> <laughs> shoot it's right there isn't it there you go ah okay. and about the screen size so oh. this, this, go ahead no, go ahead. Well, I know that I can because I like to listen to my music and I like to see who's performing the yeah. music, but I also need to know where I'm going. So yeah. I do like that you can keep the maps up on half the screen. And well, let, then let me the see you do half. it. Let me see you do it. <laughs> it's a one button push, by the way. Just push, push the home button once. Oh, that's it. There we go. And, oh, that, and that's a go. shortcut. Okay. So, well, see, just like keyboard shortcuts, you have to yeah. learn about yes. them. So now you have the split screen. Yeah. Okay. And that's what I do like. This is what I like. I like yes. to see who's playing. If I don't like that one. Now go back I to the can... full screen view of the map. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I think the point of the question, though, is, and, and, is what does Google Maps look like? And the aspect ratio of the Mazda screen is great for Apple CarPlay. It's it's a nice, um, what do you call it? Not portrait. What's the other one? Oh, I'm gonna brain fart. Landscape. It's a great landscape aspect ratio, and there's it just. And the other thing that's nice is the screen resolution is outstanding. The blacks are great. The brightness is great. It's just a, it's one of the best screens to look at. And I drive a lot of cars. Mm -hmm. No, I agree uh, with you. It, and I like how it's situated. It, it's, it's, and, and it's wide enough to just have great fidelity on the Google Maps. And again, it's wide enough to even go to your view that you like. Mm -hmm. So do it again. Do it again. Oh my gosh. Do it again. Yeah, so you're good at it I already. Am. Now I know. Okay. Now I know the shortcut. Well, here's some bumps. Well, yeah, well, I'm afraid <laughs> of my spoiler. And so. <laughs> No, I only whack the spoiler when we're parking the car in like a parking oh, lot or something. Always. So as you notice, going over those railroad tracks, completely quiet in here. Yeah, it is very quiet. He also asked the question about modifications to the car and whether we had any plans to mod it at all. And, you know, the Mazda 3 is not like a tuner car, like something like a Volkswagen would be. I think if we were going to keep this car long, long term and we haven't decided that yet, I think the mods I would want to do would be performance related. So the first thing I would like to do is a, is a better free-flowing exhaust. I know Cork Sport has some good exhaust out there. This, this exhaust already actually sounds pretty good uh, for, for just an economy exhaust. You know, I'm very leery of droning exhaust. You know, again, this car is nice and quiet on the highway, but everything else, no visual mods. I think visually, I think all we really want to do is try to get this center console wrapped, and we haven't done it yet. There's some more rough roads. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I forgot to answer that one. So another bonus there. And uh, okay, we'll let you guys go. Again, super duper thank you for joining us today. And always have a great day, morning or evening. Wherever you may be.